I'm not going to go into a long definition of who everybody is, but simply say that Bruce is at Chester County Eye Associates, Eye Care Associates. He's been a member and speaker with uh, the support site from its beginning. And Bruce is going to address us today with a definition of what age-related macular degeneration is all about. Thanks very much, Bruce. Thank you, Dr. Bucker. Um, I'm going to start from the basics, so we're all on the same playing field, um, to talk about the eye. The eye is built like a camera, so light is focused by the front of the eye, by the cornea and the lens. And the cornea is the clear dome that's over the colored part of your eye, through the pupil, through the lens, and back to the retina. And the retina is the lining that lines the back of the eye, and that's the light-sensitive structure of the eye. That's like the film of our own camera. The macula is a region. It's the center part of the retina. It's about 5% of the total surface area of the eye. And that is the most important part of the retina for seeing people's faces, reading, and recognizing color. Now, as we get older, we can start to develop um, deposits in the foundation layer of the retina. The retina is about 10 layers deep, and there's a foundation layer. I'm just going to call it the foundation layer. Other names for it are the RPE layer, the retinal pigment epithelial layer. So as we get older, we start to develop deposits in this foundation layer. And these deposits are called drusen. And these are the earliest signs of macular degeneration. Now, does everyone that have drusen develop macular degeneration? No. And do you have to have drusen to develop age-related macular degeneration? The answer is no. But that's the, the most common finding. So as we get older, we can start to develop these deposits. And in the majority of patients, they develop more of these deposits. And then the majority of the patients, the retina can begin to wither. It begins to, to disintegrate. And you start to lose the structures that sense light. And then when that happens and the doctor looks in and we see the withering, we call that the dry form or the non-exudative form of macular degeneration. And if you look at about over 80% of the patients in the United States will develop the dry form of macular degeneration. Now, the majority of those patients, and we'll talk about what you can do to help slow that down, um, <clears throat> will slowly develop some withering in the eye. Now, not everyone that has dry macular degeneration loses their central vision, and there's, there's a, a wide variety of uh, visual loss associated with that. For a smaller percentage of patients, patients can start to develop abnormal blood vessels that grow where they don't belong. And when these blood vessels start to bleed or leak into the macula, into the retina in that area, the retina will start to function poorly and will start to disintegrate and die. And when, when that happens and when we look in and we see the bleeding or leakage, we call that the wet form of macular degeneration. And if you compare how quickly patients lose vision with the wet compared to the dry, patients tend to lose vision very rapidly uh, when they just start to develop the wet macular degeneration. So although it, it affects a smaller percentage of the patients, um, it is, it, it is the, the more severe, more rapid form of visual loss. Um, and patients that have wet macular degeneration, there's, there are some varieties. Some patients can have abnormal blood vessels leaking. Sometimes they can have an elevation of the foundation layer where the foundation layer becomes, uh, becomes leaky and we see fluid. And for the majority of these patients, we have, we are, we have treatments that are, be, are much more effective than when I started training. So that's a brief overview of, of the dry and wet form of macular degeneration.